Hey guys, this is Introducing Emmy, and uh, I know I haven't made a video in like a million years. Actually, I've made quite a few videos, I just haven't been uploading them. I need to edit them and do some other stuff, but I just got back from Japan, and um, I went to an art store called Tools, and it is run by, or at least heavily sponsored by, uh, Copic, and the company behind Copic, or Copic, whichever. And uh, they had this cool book, and I haven't translated it yet, but basically it is a tip guide by an artist who works primarily in Copic markers. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's a girl who wrote this book, so I will use she. And uh, she just shows uh, a lot of different techniques that uh, I just really never knew about. Uh, when using Copic. She uses her colorless blender like 24-7 and I never <laughs> used my colorless blender when I used Copic. She also uh, shows uh, correct strokes, you know, circular as opposed to jagged. Uh, shows lots of different ways you can make patterns, how to fill in uh, areas properly and whatnot. And also uh, she recolors this same image of this uh, the same line art of this girl character of hers uh, over and over showing like different methods and color combinations and things like that and I just found that to be really clever and interesting and stuff. I haven't really translated it but to be fair there's not a lot of text. So uh, today, let me find my gloves, I'm going to be coloring this image of Rose. It's actually just a simple ink to draw, a digitally inked drawing I did um, for my banner when Hiveworks took over uh, Trying Human, hosting Trying Human. They didn't take over. They weren't like, okay, now we're going to push some aliens in it and the comic gets good. Anyway, one of the things that, uh, real quick, I should mention, this is not a heat treated uh, image, so this may bleed. I have never tried traditionally coloring an image off of this printer, and all inks are different. So this is going to be experimental all around. But uh, yeah, so one of the things I thought was interesting is she puts her colorless blender down first in a lot of cases as to not soak up um, color into the blender itself and I thought well that's clever I'm just over here being a big dumb and doing it the wrong way the only thing is I'm gonna have to kind of like let this dry a little bit to see <laughs> see how it goes so um, when I did, or when I got my Copics, I used them a lot. But I will be the first one to tell you I used them probably incorrectly, with no uh, method to my madness. I was a child. I bought them at a convention. They were a million dollars. I think it was like $300 for my set. They were brand new at the time in the United States. Like I think they had been out in Japan for a while, but they um, were still like this sort of novelty, not even novelty art item, but very sophisticated but rarely bought or used just because of how expensive they were. It had nothing to do with like um, how good or bad they were. It was honestly just the price. If you weren't a professional I can't imagine you affording them. And I mean, when I got them, that was like my Christmas gift that year. <laughs> they were very expensive. Especially for a teenager who didn't know what the hell they were doing. Um, so... Uh, also, I should mention that when I got my Copics, I used them more just to screw around and try to figure out things, though I was trying to seriously produce art with them, but by the time I got into school, that was kind of 
Dunsies. I think I still had them in college, but I very rarely used them just because I was moving on to primarily digital art because at the time I could do things a lot quicker in digital. And I have to admit, I was thinking about it the other day in the shower <laughs> for some reason, that uh, when it comes to art, I am not a, uh, I'm not the kind of person that can sit down and work on one piece for like 80 hours. I like volume. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like quality, but I like a lot of work to look at through. And I think that sort of fits why I went into comics. I don't want the fat end. Um, I like my pieces to be like... part of a larger experience, I guess. That sounds sort of haughty, but... It's the truth. I am surprised this printer paper is not bleeding. The the black that is kind of in this, these are very old copics of mine and they've been very badly treated over the years. I think I've had these for 10, 12 years now. I think I got them when I was, oh my god, maybe 14, 15. So they'd be even older. They'd be almost like 15 years old now. So anyway, um, they are slightly abused, meaning I would use them with inks, black inks that would run, and so they're a little, like, dirty. <clears throat> it's actually fun to use them and feel like I know what I'm doing, like I have an appropriately Uh, light touch with them <laughs> or at least I have enough artistry under my belt to not like make a big fool out of myself with them I would like a an even lighter color, but to be fair, I actually don't have a ton of colors anymore. Maybe my pearl? Yeah, this isn't the best. Like I said, I actually don't have many Copics anymore. They've really uh, changed in quality and price. Um, I think the newer Copics are maybe a little better than these ones that I'm using here. Oh, I just got a little bit of black to pull down off of the ink. I don't know if you can see that on her neck there. Let me shove the camera down a little closer. So, I don't know if you can see that, but I did manage to pull a slightly, like a little bit of ink down off of the line, so I'm going to keep trying to steer clear of them. Whew, buddy, I forgot the way these things smell, too. <laughs> they stink. Have a tiny scent. Now, if you've never used uh, Copics before, I should mention that these do bleed through. Um, and if you have, a, ooh, that looks ghostly. It looks like a ghost, like putting their hand on the window, you know. But anyway, um, I should mention that if you're doing these in a sketchbook, there's a good chance these are going to bleed down onto the next page. They are very wet markers. Um, 
Like, I know prismas will bleed through, but I don't know, like, I don't remember if prismas can bleed all the way down the second page, but I would, uh, I'd recommend uh, keeping, like, a piece of blotter paper in between, which is just like a piece of paper, but it blots up the ink that bleeds down through. So I would recommend doing that. This was always my favorite uh, of my blue Copics sky. And I think I kind of overfilled this at some point. <laughs> you can see inside the cap, it's just like an explosion. So I actually want to try using this blender again real quick before I go all bananas. Just put some in her eye. One of the techniques I thought was kind of cool in the book was that she shows like ways that you can actually remove Copic. I mean, it doesn't go away completely, but uh, what you can do is like just like basically blend and blend and blend and blend with your clear blender over a color, and then you can use uh, tissues to kind of bring it up. It's still always going to be there a little bit, but it you can get it light enough that when you cover it with a different color or whatever that it, you know, you use white out or whatever you need to do, it won't be like this big ridiculous deal. Okay, this, I think my sky blue is dried up. It looks pretty dry. Dare I fill this with isopropyl out? alcohol. I don't know if that's really the issue here. <laughs> I don't really want to do that. I know it works with Prismas. If you put some isopropyl down inside, that'll clear them up. But I think I would absolutely just destroy this. You know what? Let's just do it. Let's go nuts. Let me move my work for a minute. So I don't know if this actually works or not. I'm going to use the big fat gross end. If it doesn't work, I'm going to go out and spend a dollar and get a new, uh, Sky blue. It'll be the first Copic I've bought in like 400 years. Where's my eyedropper? I have an eyedropper somewhere. Sorry. Sorry about this like impromptu taking care of business. Did you see my tie? I got my tie got on the desk for a minute there. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you're going to deal with this like little impromptu moment. You know what? I don't know where my eyedroppers are. I did have a bunch, and I even have my alcohol here. I'm going to push them in somewhere. Oh, well. I will try that later. I'm going to put this aside for now. See if I can get the ink to fall down to one end. <laughs> Come back, little ink. All right. So let's choose a different blue. Um, I've got this uh, it's a much lighter blue. It's a ice, an ice blue. So let's try that out. It might be dead too. Blues were always <laughs> my favorite. So they are mostly dead. Yeah, that's dead. Man, I just went through and tested all these markers not long ago so that I wasn't wasting time with um, markers with no color. Okay, let's try this uh, lapis lazuli. <laughs> One of these blues is going to have some color in it. Come on. Don't be a big whiny baby. Come on. Well, you're forcing me to use a prisma. You've backed me into a corner. Uh, this is a periwinkle. Even my periwinkle is getting a little dry. Gotta love that blue. Okay, well, what about my frost blue? Does that work? Like, can I shade her eyeballs with this? I can. I think I'm gonna use the frost blue for Hugh's hand as well. I 
think my camera's shaking from a train going by. This is really fun. I'm really enjoying this. I uh, might be getting back into comics a little bit. And I realized that I used to have this red. I think it was like a rust red or something. But it was my favorite red. And it was sort of the color that I ended up settling on for Rose. Uh, for Rose's hair. Uh, well, like the digital version of that color. And I went to get it today out of my collection of Copics. And I didn't have it. <laughs> Not happy. It's not a bad blue. I'll use it as like the dark. Yeah, these aren't like the cleanest colors, but like I said, for some reason I have like 4,000 greens, but I have like two blues and like some other, like almost nothing colors. So at least I'll be able to color her nightgown the right color. She has sort of like this sea bluish um, nightgown. Somewhere between like a mint green and aqua green and a turquoise. I don't know. Nobody ever gets the color quite right when they do. Uh, I shouldn't say it. Some people get it right. But it's like somewhere between like these three colors. Something like that. That's, this one's probably the closest if it was a little darker. But I don't have any of those darker. So we're going to have to kind of like make it. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to. I think I'm going to use this pale lavender to shade the dress to try to use like one of these uh, or her nightgown to use one of these techniques that's in the book where she she'll shade with like a light uh, color whether it be a purple or or whatever and then she'll go back over with the The, like flat color. It's a little opposite the way I normally work. I usually lay down my flats first and then I come back in. Well, when I work digitally. Because then that way I will know like right away if a color doesn't Uh, like a shading color doesn't work with the color underneath of it you know like some colors they look really sickly together like I hate when people shade blonde hair using nothing but grays it makes the hair look green and uh, but if you did it like that if you shaded first with your gray or like a blue and then went yellow over it it's gonna desaturate that yellow or at least make it look like a really sickly <laughs> yellow and there's no way to really fix that with Copics. I mean, you guess you could go over it with a warmer color, but I don't know how that would actually uh, look. Wow, what happened to the end of that one? It looks like it's like diseased. Look at that. Can it focus on that? Well, here we go. <laughs> Dead. No, before I even started. Let's try uh, this. What color is this? Oops. Um, Nile blue. It's a little darker than I would like, but. Yeah. 
see I picked up some of that ink. I should have heat treated this paper before I started working. You know, I had this inkling, I was like, no, it'll be fine. And it wasn't. And I got the stripes wrong on her sleeve. I think that lavender I used to shade this was almost too light. trying to just like ghost around these lines since I don't want to pick up too much black ink and drag it into my marker so hopefully it'll just kind of bleed onto the edges of where it needs to be ah, let's give that a minute Kind of dry a little. It dries pretty instantaneously, but just to just to be a smarm, I would like it to go a little darker. The other reason I'm sort of doing this, other than I just need to warm up from coming back from Japan, and that I want to, is uh, I bought a Copic or Copic carrying case. And uh, can hold a decent amount, like more than I think you would need at any given time. And I thought, well, If I ever want to go to a con and I want to do more than just bum around like the bum I am, I could do commissions and actually do them in color because normally I, I mean I can sketch something or do something in ink but beyond that it's not gonna be complete. So, me. <laughs> so I really, gosh I really wish that our eyes were like bam you know like really pretty and bright and saturated but but that's just not the world we live in today I'm glad I went with the bigger one I actually printed out a slightly smaller size but uh, I'm glad I gave myself room spacious Okay, let's do, I think we're going to go with a Scarlet Lake. That might be a little bright. Yeah, let's just go for it. Let's do a Scarlet, uh, Scarlet Lake Prisma, so not a Copic. Everybody screams, cries on her uh, hair, and we'll just have to deal. just for the sake of finishing the image. I have a feeling that if I would have just been like, well, that's all the Copic colors I have and that's all I'm gonna do, um, people would not be too pleased. So. I'm not getting the kind of coverage I would like. So I'll just add like pseudo texture in. <laughs> Do 
doesn't help. The tip feels like really um wobbly or something. It's kind of like rolling strangely. Might even be a little dry. Some of these markers are kind of getting up there. <laughs> As you probably have guessed by the whole entire video of me going, oh, this one's dry. This one's dry. I'm not in the market to actually spend any money on markers right now, so. Hell, I'm just not in the market to, like, spend money at all, so, like, we're starving this month, I guess. Yo, oh, we're super getting dry. Come on, little buddy, just get through this. No. Scarlet Lake. Scarlet Lake sounds like a euphemism for a chick's period. Yeah, I'm just boating on the Scarlet Lake this month, or this week. This month, I wish. Um. Yeah, come on, come on. I think I'm also wiggling the camera so if we all just clap our hands together. Come on, Tank, you can do it. I believe in you. Like this all down in here. Bullshit. <laughs> it's not good. It ain't cute. Well, there's parts about this I like, and other parts that I act like absolutely demolish. So this is a Copic. Let's uh, try to shade some of this. AK damage control. By the way, I'm sorry about any hammering in the background. I know I say this like every video, but I do live in like a very noisy complex. At least right now, nobody's screaming like these people across the way. Their dog has terrible separation anxiety and every day they leave for work. It's just hours and hours of screaming until the dog finally 
runs out of oxygen and passes out. kind of interesting. I think the dog honestly is not so uh, concerned with the owner as it is with the owner's children. Um, she's got two little girls and when those girls are not with that dog, that dog loses its mind. It's like, where are the babies? Yeah, that hair is like hot garbage, but oh well. It's kind of giving me a feel for like this whole shindig again and doesn't help my Copics are like dried out. Ooh, blah, 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 blah. Let me put that up there like that. I will say I do like the hands, like the flesh is pretty good and the gray, like that light, um, what was that? Was it the frost blue looked, I think looked really good. Maybe. Yeah, it was the frost blue. I think that was going places I liked, so I'll try to get my head shadow out of the way, but uh, it didn't help that I didn't have a very good bread, I didn't really plant my shadows on my hair, <laughs> don't look at that. But I think the rest of it, um, it's interesting to hear my dog, she's so sick of me, everybody's so sick of me. Alright, I think that's going to be it for now, I need to record some other stuff, but I will see you guys later, bye!